Okay, hello, it's James, and I'm here with Ronathan from Ronathan Plays and Probes. Hello, mate, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Very glad to have you here. Um, uh, the reason Ronathan is here is because we want to talk about the traffic light system of uh, different levels of competitive play. And um, what we're going to do is we'll set out what the, what we consider the problem to be. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how, how Dice Fight has tried to solve that problem. And then Jonathan is going to present a couple of ideas for refinements of his own. And hopefully that will make the whole thing a bit clearer and it'll give you some ideas for your own tournaments. So without further ado, let's crack on. Um, Ronathan, you know the situation when you bring a, a nice friendly couples team um, to, to an event and you're ready for a bit of fun. And uh, sometimes what happens is... Well, what happens is is that uh, you're just going to end up getting smashed because, hey, you brought the friendly team and then all of a sudden somebody decides to bring these tier one win cons and control pieces that just absolutely smash you. So what ends up happening is that you kind of feel deflated afterwards and you just feel like, I thought it's supposed to be just a super casual event. And it does leave you deflated. But I also got to admit, I'm guilty of this myself to a degree because I have brought some super competitive cards on a casual team. So, you know, I'm guilty as charged as well, too. I think I think it happens. I mean, this is obviously a very extreme example, but uh, this sort of mismatch in the levels of the teams can happen in restricted events as well. So, you know, you have like a single energy or single affiliation and somebody will take it as a sort of casual thing and another person uh, will will optimize their build within you know to the to the very top of the constraints of whatever the limiting factor is whether it's you know only female characters or only shield characters or whatever um and i used to do that for sure i'm sorry to everybody that i was unpleasant to uh, but it, it was not meant in any you know the, the people who play the the high end teams um are not are not like trying to be nasty i think on the whole uh, it's just a different mindset, you know. Some people approach it wanting to have a good time, um, and some people approach it wanting to play the best possible team they can within the constraints. And that mismatch of expectations causes problems, I think, um, for both parties. You know, you, as as a competitive player, you don't want to drub somebody who's just not not playing anything competitive. And as as a as a fun player, you probably don't want to be drubbed. I should imagine. So, what can we do about that? I, I, I thought about this problem. Uh, we, we started Dice Fight, which is a... Oh, let me show you the picture. It's a, it's a weekly online tournament on Thursday night. And we've been running that since last July. And uh, I, I gave some thought to this problem. And in February this year, um, I introduced uh, a traffic light system. Um, and that tried to split the, the competitive levels into three... Um, so that any mismatch in expectations would be would be limited. You're going to have a top level of red, which would be super competitive, very little in the way of a ban list, if anything, um, no holds barred. Um, and then we had orange or yellow, as apparently it is called in America. Um, and for that, we had a core list. And this is the golden list, so it's quite long. There's 50 cards on it. But that removes all of the filthiest win conditions and all of the really, really oppressive control. Um, and so orange events would be still somewhat competitive, but um, you would have to try a bit harder. Um, you couldn't just go for the obvious stuff because hopefully I had anticipated that and removed it. And then the third uh, traffic light, obviously, would be green. And that also would have no ban list okay so i always like to think that sort of green is is more of a is more of a mindset i want to encourage people to sort of self regulate and not i don't want to have a a thousand card ban list that they have to sift through to see what they can play and what they can't so uh in establishing these three levels i sort of enjoyed the symmetry of the the red at the top with no ban list and the green at the bottom with no ban list. And then in the middle, we just had one single core 50 card ban list, which uh, delineated the bottom of red and the very top of green. But hopefully, if you were playing green, you would realize that 
you know, obviously you can't play any of those cards, but also you wouldn't play anything close to those cards because that's not the point of green. Um, does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I think what got me interested in uh, a vi doing a video with you today was the fact that you sent out a survey uh, about the whole traffic light system. Oh, indeed. Uh, we had a we had a questionnaire um, about online events generally. Uh, Dice, I, it started with with Dice Fighter. Then I thought, well, I might as well ask some more general questions and try to get a bit of, bit of feedback. And one of the questions we asked was whether people thought that the traffic light system was useful. And this is this is what came back. Sorry, five. I should say was I think really really useful, and one was not at all useful. So it looks like the majority of people are either neutral or positive. And a good, you know, a good 45% think that it is either somewhat or really useful, which is good. But we can do better than good, surely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we, we also asked um, people if they had any comments and any, any sort of uh, more, more verbose feedback. And we did get uh, uh, quite a few comments. Thank you very much, everybody who, who filled it in. Um, what are some of the comments that we had, Jonathan? Uh, one of the comments that I really liked really liked was this one that said, the traffic light system needs better communication or better self-policing by people. What I found at times is that not everyone has the same direction. It would end up being with one or two players accidentally bringing something way too strong, and either they feel bad or their opponent feels bad. Yes. Well, um, in terms of better communicating, that was that was half of the purpose of this video. Um, hopefully this video will make more per people aware of what the traffic light system is and it will serve to clarify it to some extent. This is how we do it in Dice Fight, this is how we've been doing it and this is probably how we will continue to do it and I'll also try to make the web page um, a bit clearer um, but I think my experience is that people when they when they try and make a green team, sometimes people will send me the teams and say, "Is this green enough?" And sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. And then they have a couple of goes, <laughs> some sometimes, and uh, before they sort of tune in to what is reasonable, because of course it is subjective. You know, even splitting it into these three bands, there is a high degree of subjectivity. But I'm hoping that 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 core orange list serves to to establish some sort of structure for people. But Ronathan has had some ideas for either either uh, improvements or maybe just like a variation on a theme. And would you like to tell us about that, Ronathan? Yeah, so the idea uh, that I'm thinking is maybe the, uh, along with that, maybe these uh, lists need to be more defined. So we currently have the red list, as you were saying, that has no ban. So, hey, bring your tier one, bring your most cutthroat uh, A-game team and, you know, let's just duke it out, right? But... I feel that the problem in the community is that when we play these orange events or the or yellow here in the States, as we call mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. um, since our traffic lights are yellow in the middle, um, we tend to have a problem. Well, is your team more red orange or is it more green orange? And maybe we just need something that, you know, that like clearly defines like, hey, this is exactly what, what it is in the middle. So here's my uh, little uh, thing about what we're going to do for this orange slash yellow uh, traffic light. And is that we're just going to straight up ban the win cons. We're not going to ban the enablers. It's just, hey, you know, we want to make this a little bit more orange reddish so we can still have that competitiveness, but mm -hmm. it's going to take you uh, a little longer uh, to develop or to pull off a combo that you want with this tough team. So uh, the only win con that's not on here is that Jerry Lawler ringside basic announcer, which, hey, th that just kind of, it can be run with a, a multitude of cards. So let's just take that out of the equation and then let's just put all the win cons on that list. This differs uh, with your uh, orange list where I decided to add Danny Moonstar and the Dreadnought on there as well too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We should point out that this is uh, specifically for modern, whereas my big fifty card list was for gold. And so, I, and and actually, I think if you reduce my fifty to just modern, as you say, it would be pretty similar with just a couple of differences. Right. So yeah, so that that that's what would happen if we're doing an orange slash yellow event. And and notice how this is just all the win cons now. Uh, the problem at times is like, what should you bring to a green level event? What cards are there? And so remember, these green level events are for casual play 
in which you want to encourage newer players to be able to uh, put their pieces on the board and actually to get them out. So w- since we have the win cons banned in the uh, orange list, we're going to ban all the control pieces that, mm-hmm. uh, that prevent your opponent from putting things out, as well as f- forcing them to remove or not being able to attack. So that's why I said, hey, all force attack, all force block, and all remove attacking globals, mm-hmm. those are gone, as well as just straight up the intimidate keyword. You know, there's nothing like having your piece out there and then your opponent finds a way just to move it out of the field or capture it, yeah, <laughs> that type of thing. So so let, let's get all those control, key control pieces out along with, in modern, uh, Drax, uh, the new Spider-Man, as well as mm-hmm. Typhoid mm-hmm. Mary. And the other thing that I thought, too, is that, hey, Asuka and Clayface, they're enablers to getting big pieces out a lot quicker. So let's just go ahead and just take uh, that out of the equation as well, too, just to make it better for casual players just to get in. Makes sense. Uh, I think I had on my orange list some of the control. So on your your orange list or your yellow list, you just had the win cons. Um, whereas I had a few of the, the, the Drax, I think, and the Typhoid Mary that was... Uh, that is actually on your green list, um, but it's it's interesting to add uh, the force attack and force block and like like big chunks of stuff like that. It's quite it's quite interesting, I think. Um, I, I still feel like uh, this this is probably the 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 yellower end of green than I think what we're suggesting, what we're sort of encouraging people to play in dice fight. That's absolutely not a bad thing, just a difference, I think. So we should I think we should say that. Um, clearly all of this is 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 pretty pretty subjective and what ronathan has done is um try to make it less subjective i think this is this is a somewhat different approach to the one that i've taken in dice fight but i would be very interested to hear your opinions on what you have done to to limit uh limit these clashes of expectations and whether you how you feel about ban lists because i know that some people really don't like ban lists um so clearly this is this is a subject for discussion and this video is basically setting out what we currently do in Dice Fight and what Ronathan is suggesting as uh, possible possible good ideas as alternatives. And I think, uh, Ronathan, you had another interesting idea, right? Yes. So I, uh, my interesting idea is that instead of having a traffic light system, let's just have one list. And on this list is going to be a wish list in which you can have one card on this Uh, list that can be on your team you could pick any one card however though you cannot have any other card on your list so if you want to run that becky lynch uh becky lynch card go for it you can but you can't run it with its enabler booker t and jerry lawler and that's the thought behind this is that hey Mm -hmm. you still want to try out some of those meta win cons but we're going to make it a little harder for you to run its counterpart or its enabler and so along with this uh wish list you just pick from it, and this is basically your orange, uh, red level uh, type of event. Mm-hmm. Now, if you wanted to make this more casual, uh, f- from this one list, you can turn this wish list into an actual ban list. So, if mm-hmm. we wanted to make this super casual, boom, here's the ban list. You cannot have any of these cards on your team. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I think uh, I think that could work quite quite well indeed. Um, I think the only the only thing I would say is that uh, with this with this list and the the previous green one, uh, because they're for modern, the number of cards is relatively manageable. I think you must have about twenty cards here, which which is I think a fairly reasonable ban list. But if you try to expand this approach to golden, you might end up with a list which is as long as your arm possibly. So that might be the only drawback. I think. Right, and then it ends up looking like the global escalation list, which is huge. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think uh, both of those are extremely interesting ideas. Um, so, listeners, you've got the the dice fight way, which is the core orange ban list, which has about fifty golden and modern cards on it, and then you have the red, which is no bans, and the green, which is no bans. It's just a mindset. And then you have Ronathan's two different suggestions. Uh, one with the with a sort of it was just for modern with a core orange orange list, and then adding to that with his green list and including stuff like keywords and force attacks and force blocks, which I thought was really interesting. 
And then uh, the second variant, which was this wish list, where you, again, for modern, you can just pick one card off it, and uh, you're not allowed to have any other cards from that list, and that should limit it to to, uh, to orange, I would think. And then, as he says, you can turn it into a, a ban list, and that would be a sort of high-end green, would it? Mm, or still quite orange. Low orange, I guess. <laughs> Low orange, in which if we feel we could expand it out, then you can add some of the key control pieces afterwards and then make it definitely more of a truly green because this is definitely high uh, orange red with this wish list. So, but if we throw in Drax, Typhoid Mary on this list, now it gets a bit more interesting as yep. to where now it becomes a lot more green if you make this a ban list. Yep, indeed. Okay, so there you go. Uh, three reasonably different ideas. And as we say, the, these are just ideas which you can take and adapt and use or not use. And we would absolutely love to hear what you have to say about those and your own experiences of ban lists and stuff in the comments. Um, so thank you very much indeed, Ronathan. It's been a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. I enjoyed it. This was awesome. And I'm glad you reached out to me and we could uh, put this whole thing together. It's been fun. Um, I hope listeners that you, or listeners and indeed watchers, you have enjoyed it and found it useful. And uh, thank you very much for your comments, everybody who responded, responded to the questionnaire. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon and leave a comment. And also visit Ronathan Plays and Probes. Thank you very much for listening. Take care and good night. <laughs>